Picture Book Drama, where it is everything in entertainment. I am your host, Sean, your video and comic guru. Welcome to another edition of The Movie News. First up is DC Comics. The CW has added Chicago PD star Josh Dakar as an anti-hero vigilante for the fifth season of Arrow. Created by Marv Wolfman and George Perez, Vigilante made his comic book debut in 1983's The New Teen Titans Annual No. 2. Adrian Chase is a New York District Attorney who was driven to become the mass anti-hero after his family was killed by crime lords. Sound familiar? Although Vigilante started off with non-lethal methods, Chase's mental health began to deteriorate over the years, and feeling responsible for the death of a police officer, he began to take a darker, more violent persona. Fans of Arrow could certainly see how Adrian Chase and Oliver Queen may have a few things in common. I just wonder if we're going to get an appearance from a character who lives in a certain city named Bloodhaven. Green Arrow has mentioned that he visited the city before in a past episode of Arrow. Arrow welcomes Artemis to Star City. Madeline McLaughlin's Evelyn Sharp will make her way back to Arrow in Season 5, but with a vigilante twist. Variety reports that McLaughlin will return to the show as Artemis. She appeared as Evelyn Sharp in the Season 4 episode Canary Cry, where she impersonated Black Canary shortly after Laurel's death. In the episode, she hoped to get revenge on Damian Dark for her parents' death. However, in Season 5, she will appear in multiple episodes, starting in the second episode of the season, and this time around she will be assuming her own identity as a masked vigilante Artemis. Arrow Season 5 will debut in October on The CW. Supergirl just got a wonderful new addition to the cast. Linda Carter has been cast as the President of the United States, who will make her debut in the third episode and will appear in multiple episodes. Linda Carter played Wonder Woman on the ABC series for three seasons. Greg Berlanti continues the tradition of casting actors who played superheroes previously. Dean Cain was Superman in The Adventures of Lois and Clark on NBC, and Helen Slater played Supergirl in the movie of the same name in 1984. Now, both are playing Supergirl's parents. Laura Vanderbilt was Kara in Smallville, now plays the cybernetic bad guy, Indigo. Rumors ran wild when the show decided to bring Superman on the show and out of the shadows. Everyone thought that Tom Welling was going to finally don the tights and become the Man of Steel. Supergirl's second season will debut on the CW in October. Monday morning, Grant Gustin went to Twitter to tease a major announcement for the third season of the CW hit, The Flash. In a tweet, Gustin posts, Flashpoint, this is not a drill. Executive producer Greg Palanti even responded back to Gustin on Twitter giving his blessing to the reveal. How closely will this tie into the 2011 DC Comics miniseries? Only time will tell. Warner Brothers Wonder Woman is almost done filming, and I put together as many images from the shoot as I could find. Wonder Woman is set to hit the theaters in 3D and IMAX on June 2nd, 2017. Next, we have Justice League news. Amanda Heard, who will be playing Mirror in next year's Justice League, as well as in the James Wan, Jason Momoa Aquaman movie, was rumored to have been told not to come to London for a costume fitting with Justice League because producers felt she was not camera ready. Heard reportedly lost 20 pounds from the stress of her legal disputes. The studio believes she isn't quite ready to suit up as Mirror for Justice League. However, the fitting has been rescheduled for a later date. Previously, Heard used her costume fitting as a reason for not attending a disposition in a domestic violence case against Johnny Depp. There's still a year and a half before the release of Justice League, but Warner Brothers has released a ton of new details. The possible plot, the villain, new movie logo, and Willem Dafoe's role have all been released. Fueled by his restored faith in humanity and inspired by Superman's selfless act, Bruce Wayne enlists the help of his newfound ally Diana Prince to face an even greater enemy. Together, Batman and Wonder Woman will quickly to find and recruit a team of metahumans to stand against this newly awakened threat. 
But despite the formation of this unprecedented League of Heroes, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash, it may already be too late to save the planet from an assault of catastrophic proportions. Directed by Zack Snyder, this is the follow-up to this year's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The new logo, while not as impressive as the one previously released, does hark back to the classic Justice League of America logo while still having its own flavor. We get a look at Batman's new tech and the upgraded Batmobile. The movie will introduce the Flying Fox, a large airship for team travel, big enough to fit the Batmobile. Along with Flying Fox, Justice League will also add a one-person vehicle called the Nightcrawler, a smaller piece of Batman tech created that will sport multiple legs designed to get into smaller places. No picture has yet been shared. Additionally, Batman will add another armored Batsuit to his arsenal along with a more standard outfit. The main villain of the movie will be Stephen Wolf, who was cut out of the theatrical release of Batman v Superman. We now know who Willem Dafoe will be playing. Warner Brothers confirmed that the actor will be portraying an Atlantean ally of the Justice League, Falco. In the comics, Falco is an ally of Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman, and in the new 52 reboot, Falco is responsible for the Thrones of Atlantis storyline that brought the surface world into war with the Atlanteans just to get Aquaman to reclaim the throne. It is unknown if Willem Dafoe will appear in a James Wan Aquaman film, but it seems like a safe bet. New movie update on a Ben Affleck Batman movie. Affleck has said, I think they have a date, although I don't know if I would necessarily be able to make that date because I don't have a script that's ready yet. So my timetable is, I'm not going to make a movie until there's a script that I think is good enough because I've been on the end of things where you have a movie where you have a script that's not good yet and it doesn't pan out. I'm not happy enough with it to actually go out and make a Batman movie, for which I have the highest standards. That's something that would have to pass a very high bar with me. It's not just, yeah, that might be fun, let's go try this out. The world's greatest detective aspect of Batman is more present in Justice League than it was ever in Batman v Superman and will probably be expanded upon in a Batman movie that I would do. I think the great Batman stories are, at their heart, detective stories. That's why I feel that they're more like noir movies in a way. Somehow they feel like it would be the Maltese Falcon. Earlier in this broadcast, I showed a bunch of images from the Wonder Woman movie. I found these two of the Greek goddess Gal Gadot ready for battle. Let me know what you think. Sunday night after Game of Thrones, HBO released their first teaser trailer for Westworld. Based on a Michael Crichton's 1973 film of the same name, the sci-fi thriller is a dark odyssey about the dawn of artificial consciousness and the evolution of sin, set in a futuristic theme park called Westworld. Created by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy and executive producer J.J. Abrams, the series features an all-star cast and includes Anthony Hopkins, Ed Harris, James Marsden, Tandy Newton, Jeffrey Wright, Tessa Thompson, and many others. Westworld premieres in October on HBO, as you can see the teaser trailer right here. Do you know where you are? I'm in a dream. That's right, Dolores. You're in a dream. Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? Welcome to Westworld. No orientation. No guidebook. All our hosts are here for you. In this world, you can be whoever you want. Are you real? Well, if you can't tell, does it matter? Oh, no! This behavior, we're miles beyond the glitch here. What are your drives? To meet my maker. Terrified. I feel spaces opening up inside of me. Like a building with rooms I've never explored. I think there may be something wrong with this world. Something hiding underneath. These violent delights have violent ends. In sad news, 
actor Ron Lester passed away this past Friday of kidney and lung failure. He is best known for his roles in Varsity Blues and on another teen movie. But here is a list of all of his films. Ron Lester will be sorely missed. We're also sad to report that Anton Yuchin, best known as Chekhov in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek reboots, died this Sunday in a free car accident at his home in the San Fernando Valley. Abrams and several members of the cast released statements of shock and grief. Anton was 27 years old. This December, he will play the lead in Netflix's upcoming animated series, Troll Hunters, from Guillermo del Toro and DreamWorks Animation. Anton recently completed filming Thoroughbred, a psychological thriller, a sci-fi drama, Rememory, and two indie films, We Don't Belong Here and Porto. Here is a list of his films. 